Well, good morning, everybody. It's another Saturday morning here in the West, and I'm here with Keith Murphy. Today, we thought we'd give you a little bit of information about conforming loans. So again, this is my good friend and loan officer extraordinaire, Keith Murphy with Essex Mortgage. So Keith, maybe you can start by kind of defining what does um, conforming mean and, and, and who decides this? Sure, love to. And thank you for the uh, nice introduction. Um, yeah, conforming is a name set for con conforming loan limit, meaning the Federal Housing Finance Authority every year sets how much of a loan you can take on and have it federally insured. Most banks that do mortgage loans uh, want to make sure that they have federal backing or insurance in the event of you know some sort of default that their losses are protected. So every year the Federal Housing Finance Authority takes a look at the country and the trends in real estate and decides on what will be the conforming limit for that year. And for this year, it's $510,400. By way of comparison, just in 2019, last year, it was 460, uh, yeah, 484 uh, and change. So that's a pretty big jump year over year, you know? Um, so anytime you're doing a loan at four, excuse me, I'm messing up. Anytime you're doing a loan at 510, 400, you are in the federal limits for uh, the conforming loans. And that is across the country, including in your county, Riverside, San, San Bernardino, in Orange County, Los Angeles, everywhere. Now, in certain areas, and this is where it gets kind of confusing, they look at the cost of housing and set high balance limits just for certain areas, such as Los Angeles and Orange County are considered a high cost area. So we can go above and beyond that 510, 400 loan amount conforming to a high balance conforming loan amount of 765, 600. Okay. Other areas don't have high balance such as Riverside and San Bernardino. Those loans are capped at the 510, 400. So maybe we could talk about some workarounds when you're in Riverside and you've hit this limit, your house is listed or the house you wanna buy is above that conforming loan limit. How, how do we get around that? Yeah, that'd be great yeah. because we do have properties out here that are, you know, they're they're definitely selling in the, you know, six hundred and ninety thousand on up to, you know, a couple million. Um, it's not as, as common as it is in Orange County, but we do have those properties. Sure. So up until the, the shelter in place and COVID rules were implemented, uh, it was pretty easy to get done and you would get jumbo financing. Jumbo financing is simply a term for a loan that the federal government isn't going to insure. So the lender that's making that loan is all on their own and it's considered like portfolio. That loan is going to be on the books for the person that's underwriting it, approving it and funding it. And if it goes uh, into default for whatever reason, you as an investor are 100% uh, liable for that. So again, most investors want to be in those conforming loan limits, so they have those insurances and reps and warrants. But in that jumbo world, that, that would have been the answer. However, the jumbo financing is pretty much dried up as banks get more conservative on what kind of lending they'll do, who they'll lend to, just because of all the job losses and forbearances on credit cards, car loans, mortgage loans, it's causing them to be concerned and rightfully so. So they're tightening up guidelines. And a couple of weeks ago, I'm sure there's a niche out there that I'm not aware of, but I kind of bet through everything I can find as far as a funding source, and I'm not finding any jumbo financing. So what we're implementing uh, to help the the buyers in your market above the 510 400 limit is with a home equity line of credit that home equity line of credit is a mortgage note it's a, it's in second lien position behind that first and we're going up to 90 percent loan to value so what that means is if somebody bought on for 700,000 as an example they would have to put 10 percent down because we're capped at 90 percent loan to value 10 percent down of 700 is 70 thousand dollars now i'll get my calculator out here 700,000 times 0.90, 
means that the total loan encumbrances are going to be 630. I subtract out the 510 400. That's going to be your first trust deed conforming Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac loan. So now I'm going to issue you a second mortgage for 119 600 to cover the difference so that you can still purchase the home without having to get the loan amount down to the 510 400. And somebody could do 10% or 20% down if they wanted to and still come up with that same scenario where they do the 510 400 so they don't have mortgage insurance and then just the difference would be on that HELOC. 100%. And interestingly, let's go back to that um, $700,000 scenario. The five. 510 400 loan amount would be under 80 percent loan to value on that first so even though the second mortgages is taken up to 90 percent there would be no pmi okay i don't know if Great. that makes sense so even though the loan to value is at 90 percent, as long as that first trust deed is not above 80 percent of the value of the home there is no need for the mortgage insurance but yes, to your point, someone could still also buy a home for a million dollars, right? Mm -hmm. Put 20% down, put 25% down, and we can still get them that first trust deed for 510, 400, and then issue the second mortgage, the home equity line of credit to cover the difference up to 90%. But yeah, they could put more down and get that loan to value much lower if they wanted. Okay, great, great. All right. So it's good to know that there's some workarounds. We've been, you know, concerned about, you know, how are we going to sell these properties? Because we do have people who, you know, for some reason, one reason or another, you know, they may have been uh, planning on putting their home on the market in March or April. They've, because of COVID, they've decided, okay, we'll postpone our plans a little bit longer, but now we're starting to see that pent up you know, demand or that pent up urge to, you know, we want to get moving and get on with our plans. We're seeing some things opening like the golf courses um, here in Riverside County opened. I believe the golf courses in your area in Orange County opened last week as well, Is that, or earlier this week, right? Well, I haven't left the house, so I don't know what's open. Oh, okay. But, um. <laughs> All right. I, I haven't gone golfing, but a friend has, so I'm not a golfer, but I, I talked to a friend last night who, who did go golfing. Um, so I know that there's, you know, a little bit of a few things that are starting to open up and so people are starting to say, okay, we need to get these plans in place and now we're going to start to see these, you know, more and more homes across all sectors, uh, you know, price point sectors coming on the market. So it's like, okay, how are we going to get these properties sold? What are our fin financing alternatives? And it's just good to know, to know that we do have some of those. Uh, you had yeah. mentioned, go ahead. I was gonna say on that note, Kelly, um, two things really. This morning I read that last week's uh, pending sales, that just means that an escrow was open. Mm -hmm. So week over week, pending sales jumped 6.1%. Yes. So from my, from my side of the fence, what I'm seeing is people are starting to get comfortable with this work in place. They're actually starting to like it. Nobody likes the COVID virus itself but people are starting to get a little bit more comfortable and thinking like, well, if I'm gonna shelter in place and I still have a good job and I'm still making money and I'm working from home and interest rates are at all time lows. Yes. And there's these financing conduits to help me, why not? And I think from the buyers I'm talking to, a lot of their mindset is maybe I'll, maybe I'll be able to get a little bit better deal now than I could have two, three months ago. So that's, that's starting to see be something I'm seeing getting traction what i'm really not seeing it is the sellers so inventory is still down and sellers i think they're afraid the future more than the buyers are but there will be some uh equilibrium coming back into effect there the other thing i wanted to just mention and we may have talked about this last week but it's worth repeating is there are still zero down programs you know we, we hear in the news is i do about the credit tightening, and it is, and lenders being more conservative when they're looking at loan files, as they should. But at the same time, we still have for well-qualified buyers, zero down financing. So if somebody's working again, 
comfortable that they're not going to be in a position of a loss of income. They're tired of renting. They want to shelter in place in their own home. This is a great time to do it with interest rates of an all time low and having product that can get you in with no money down. You know, there's no reason really, uh, in my opinion, to wait. Right. Yes. And we're doing a lot of virtual showings, um, virtual open houses, and finding that more and more buyers are feeling that, okay, you know what? I can look at homes from the comfort of my own home. I can look online, I can do my shopping, and then. Um, my it, it, either I as their uh, buyer's agent or the listing agent, we get a video of the property and we then make an offer subject to that um, that person being able to come in and do a walkthrough and that's how we're uh, seeing homes getting sold now. So just a little bit of a change and I, I think some people are actually kind of starting to say, okay, you know what, this is, this is really not too bad. Um, as long as they can look at the house and see quite a bit of information ahead of time, then they're willing to write an offer subject to their own personal walkthrough. So, yeah, no, well, I'm seeing the same thing from the lending side. And on a personal note, because I, I always like to look at the properties that my clients are, you know, opening escrow on and getting financing through me on. And I just like to look at them and these, like I know you and Glenn have the Matterport and being able to do a complete virtual walkthrough in high definition, room by room by room. And I like how they have those little X's where you, you click your mouse and now you're standing in the kitchen. Now you're standing in the bathroom and being able to do that and see the video tour and the Matterport and the aerial photography you know, so you can see the neighborhood before you get in a car, even when times recover. I'm thinking that this is a more efficient way to whittle down what houses you may or may not be interested in. So, you know, there might be a silver lining here where our, our clients have more technological efficiencies mm -hmm. that can help them find the house of their dreams much quicker, easier than before. So, um, yeah, I think, I think we're onto something here. I agree. I agree. Yeah, we're looking forward to we've got a couple of new listings that are going to be coming up. We're getting ready to plan the staging and the uh, photo shoots and the, um, you know, doing all of that, the aerial drones uh, for the neighborhood and the 3D Matterport. So, you know, bringing those properties live in the market um, onto the marketplace, probably in the end of May from um, from what our clients are telling us, but we start doing the work, the behind the scenes work now and have that property ready for um, for viewing. And we um, we just did, it just as an example, we just did an open house on Facebook Live Saturday and we've already had over 10,000 views of oh that. Oh my gosh. Yeah, so it, wow. it's definitely, people are realizing, you know what, this isn't a, a the worst thing in the world to have happen for me when I do want to buy. I can still look at properties and get a good good idea of what's out there. So Kelly, if you don't mind, uh, as a kind of a Facebook Live neophyte, I don't really understand how it works from a technological point of view. How would I, if I was interested to see that virtual open house, how would I be able to go back to Facebook and see that actual open that you did? Sure. So you can go on to our Facebook page, um, Facebook slash forward slash Glenn and Kelly Nelson um, and go on to that page and it's there. So, hmm. yeah, once we uh, once we finish the Facebook live, it stays there live on our page or stays there on our page and you can go back and watch the recording. So uh, they're, they're there. Yeah. Well, I'm going to do just that. 10,000 10, views is pretty amazing. <laughs> Yeah, it was oh. up to 10,000 views oh. as of Monday. It's probably a little bit higher by now. And then um, Realtor.com and the MLS have both given us um, uh, the, uh, 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 a link to be able to place in the MLS now so that that all syncs up with Zillow and Realtor.com and Redfin, all the sites on which people are watching uh, or looking at properties. We can actually plan an open house time and have that be ready, have that link for Facebook Live or for Zoom, um, which is great because Zoom, they're, they're both interactive. Um, and we can put that out there and, you know, we can be talking to people as we're showing the property. If somebody wants to, you know, 
chime in and say, hey, can you open up that closet door? We can do that. If they want to ask us a question about, you know, what's the age of the roof or the age of the central air conditioning or whatever, we can answer those questions right there on that Facebook Live and on that Zoom call. And then we can post, whether it's a Facebook Live or a Zoom, we can have that, it stays on our Facebook page. So uh, we can also do that. We're uh, posting those on IGTV as well. That's great. And, and on our YouTube channel. Mm -hmm. So what I'm hearing, authentically hearing is prior to the COVID shelter in place rules, you know, if I was gonna sell a home, you would get it staged or whatnot, ready, flyers, sign in the yard, uh, maybe a broker tour to let every agent in the area know, and then open houses, marketing, traditional marketing, digital marketing, but it really seems like the silver lining here is you've taken what was the traditional way of promoting and exposing that property from, I don't know what the numbers would have been, but hundreds, a few thousand people to now because you cannot do the broker tours and the open houses and you have to do things very safely to protect everyone you've morphed into this more of a digital marketing effort and instead of getting hundreds you're getting ten thousand people exposed and aware of this property that that's that's quite amazing Yes, yes, I think it's uh, going to really help our sellers be able to ultimately, you know, the, the buyers who then see that property and do want to come to see the property in person or make an offer subject to their in-person uh, uh, tour are going to be very serious about the property. And so it's not to say that sellers aren't willing to later after this is over, still have an open house to be able to invite. You know, a lot of times the neighbors like to come and see, hey, what did they do to their house? It's not to say that um, people don't want to come and still see a home in person before they write an offer, uh, but this is just a way to you know, to really offer, even, offer their home to an even broader audience. Yeah, I think that encapsulates what I was trying to say right there. Yeah, yeah. Prior to COVID, maybe I got one out of 10 people to know that, hey, this house is for sale. Now I'm getting 11 out of 10 mm -hmm. <laughs> because you've expanded, right. you've ex expanded the, the, the reach and wow, what a great trend to, uh, to be on. So um, thanks for sharing that. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Well, Keith, thank you so much. I really appreciate your time this morning and giving us a lot of great information and insight into the lending market. And uh, we look forward to talking next week um, maybe covering, you know, just what is new and what's continuing to evolve in the loan market. So I really appreciate your time this morning and we'll get together again next Saturday. Thanks so much. Sounds great.